always been a central part of our life together as far as uh, worship. And so we just thought that what we'd, we'd like to ask you to do to, with us is to join with us as our wonderful worship team is going to lead us in three great songs. Uh, some of you may know them, uh, and if you do, sing out. If you don't, hey, you'll, you'll catch on very quickly. So we're going to have three songs. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I especially like this one because it has a phrase that just comes into my mind all the time. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. I like that line. Uh, the other one is shout to the Lord, my Jesus. Lord, there is none like you. And finally one, like a rose trampled on the ground. You thought of me above all. So if you join with us just in singing these three great songs, we're going to come back up here and tell you about this next video that uh, Esther was to make. Thank you. 
And it was there at that Sunday school that they used a very big word that I didn't understand at all, and it was this big word of salvation. But it was at, uh, at the age of nine years old when I went to a camp that I began to understand what this meant. And I learned that God had provided uh, for me through his son, Jesus Christ, uh, to take away my sin. And I understood this in my head and I accepted it in my head. Uh, but there wasn't really much change in my heart and my life. And it wasn't until I was 15 years old and I went to a non-denominational camp. And there my heart and my life was completely changed. For it was there that I learned that God loved me and had not only provided for me through His Son, but that He had given me an, an instruction manual, the Bible, to guide me in life. And that's where I read in Joshua in the Old Testament 1.8, which says, this book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will um, be successful in wherever you go. In high school, I was needing a place to live, and a family in the church took me in. And this family was a Christian family, and I could identify with them because they were just like me. They weren't perfect. <laughs> but I got to see in this Christian family how a couple handled imperfections in each other and the stress of life. Each morning when I got up, if I would peek around the corner of the kitchen, I would see Mrs. Reed uh, reading her Bible or in prayer. And Mr. Reed was a train conductor, so he left very early in the morning. But often when I'd come home in the afternoon, I would see him reading his Bible, and this really made an impact on me. I saw family conflicts, and I saw frustrations. But I observed something there. I observed a cord of three working out conflicts because they included God in their home. And it made a great impact on me, and I knew that someday I wanted a Christian home. Well, my background was uh, in a different location than Gaylene's. I grew up down in the San Joaquin Valley, uh, down below Bakersfield in the big city, actually a little town, that lived up to its name. Its name was Wheat Patch. <laughs> Very famous town. So. When I had the opportunity to move to Bakersfield, I thought, wow, the big city life. And then, when I graduated from junior college, had the opportunity to move to the party school of the state of California, San Jose State. So I, I took that real quickly. I thought, I'm going to get up there real fast. Uh, my spiritual background is, is interesting. The same camp that she was affected with affected me, and we kind of compared notes and found out we had been there during our high school years at the same time, but we didn't know each other wow. at that time. But we look back at pictures and, hey, there, hey that book, there, there we are. We just didn't know each other. But God was moving in my life, and I was a kid raised in church, uh, and my dad, he used to tell it this way. Uh, he says, I may not be perfect, but think how bad we'd be if we didn't go to church. <laughs> And I thought, that sounds pretty good, Dad. That sounds like a pretty good, pretty good idea. So I thought, okay, that's why we go to church. So, so we're not as bad as we, we could be. So that was my spiritual background as well. Uh, but the same, at this same camp, uh, I grew up in a kind of a church that was a very sociable church. I mean, we had a lot of uh, potlucks and things like that. And I certainly, you know, for that. But there wasn't a real emphasis, though, on, on, uh, on Jesus and salvation. That was, you know, it was expected, but not a real emphasis on it. But at this camp that I went to, uh, uh, they had no mercy on you at all. Uh, they would just, uh, like this old preacher friend of mine used to say, they'd just kind of take you up and hang you over the pit and shake you a little bit. And, I mean, terrible things would happen to you if you didn't follow the Lord. I mean, oh, it was kind of scary there. And I remember about halfway through one one camp one year, uh, a friend of mine, fellow uh, uh, junior high student at that time, she came up to me and she said, Bob, we're praying for you. And I thought, why? I mean, I'm from Wee Patch. I'm up here where there's swimming 
and there's horses, and there's fun, and there's games, and there's girls, and then there's more games and more girls. I mean, why pray for me? I have got it all right here. And I mean, I don't care if you went up with a girlfriend, if she wasn't there too bad, you got another one before you went back. I mean, it was a great, great time. And uh, so anyway, that's how, how we met. But uh, it kind of brings me to the next story, Gailey. How I met Gailey. Uh, I heard about, uh, about her because uh, I had a girlfriend, and by this time I was at the party school, San Jose State, you know, trying to find out what, how, the, how those people live. And I had a girlfriend who had a friend of hers that was going to visit her who was a missionary type. Now, I thought a missionary type, you know, had kind of mousy hair, you know, kind of wore tennis shoes, you know, and, uh, you know, didn't get involved in all these things that, you know, party schools are known for. So she said this, this uh, girlfriend of hers, this missionary type, was going to come visit. And so I thought, okay, I'm ready, you know, I'm prepared. You know, I put my jokes away, you know, and I mean, this is going to be, you know, a very serious kind of a different experience. Well, lo and behold, what did I meet? This uh, missionary type, what was she doing? Right there, playing cards. <laughs> a missionary. Right then I thought, this is my type of missionary. <laughs> well... Anyway, in the providence of God, as things would turn out, the girlfriend and I broke up, and I cried. In fact, I, I, I just was crying so bad over the breakup. I went to see my good buddy, who was the missionary, and told her, hey, we just broke up. Don't believe a word I tell you. I'm on the rebound. <laughs> Unfortunately, she believed me. And here we are 40 years later. <laughs> that that Bob and I were buddies and the three of us hung out a lot um, and I, I was I told my roommate when she was dating him I said you know he really is a toad <laughs> <laughs> and I would sing to him who's the biggest toad of them all Bob Mitchell who's the biggest toad of them all Bob Mitchell that was her song <laughs> they broke up, Bob and I continued just to hang out together at Bud's, and as time passed, I got to know more about him and gained more insight into his character. I realized that um, he was becoming more than just a Bud, but a good friend and then a boyfriend. And instead of a toad, I found out he was really the handsome prince. <laughs> It wasn't easy trying to get Gaylene to decide to marry me. I mean, I had gone, you know, I had this other girlfriend I told you about, and I had some other girlfriends, but I never really wanted to marry them. But this lady here is different. This lady here was like nobody else I'd ever met. And I wanted to marry this one. And I pursued her with uh, every ounce of energy that I had, and uh, <clears throat> so. Uh, I, I would just go over to her house every night, her little apartment actually behind her, her dad's, uh, her dad and mother's place, and uh, I would visit her. And so she said, Bob, she said, uh, you know, it, it's, you're coming over too often. So she said, uh, you, you can't come over every night. And I said, how come? And she said, well, you just can't because I just don't have time to do anything else. You're over here every night. And I thought, well, you know, what's more fun than that? You know, I can figure out what the problem was. So she says, from now on, Tuesday night, you can't come over. Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday and Thursday. <laughs> All right, keep it real. <laughs> I remember Tuesday night came, and, of course, you know, me being mild-mannered, reclusive type that I am. Of course, I didn't go over, right? Wrong. I go over, knock on her door. She had her nerve. She wasn't home. I tell you, that that's nervy for you, isn't it? So I'm thinking, all right, now wait a minute. Let's think this out here. She's not home. I know she wasn't there because there weren't any lights on. So I thought, where would she be? Now, every night I go, oh, I bet she's doing her laundry. Yeah. So I just drove around the area until I found the closest laundromat. Guess who's there? Right? 
So I don't care what she did. One time she tried to, in fact, she did. She drove clear up. She, I guess the next time she thought I'm really going to ditch this guy. She drove to Sacramento. And I couldn't find her that time, that weekend. I couldn't find her that time. But I tell you, I was, I was, I was bound and determined. This, this woman here, this was like no other woman. When I found out that this missionary was the most fun of any girl I had ever met, but at the same time she had a seriousness of devotion to the Lord that no other body that I'd ever met had. And I thought, this is, this is one. I'm not going to let this one go. And so I tried all sorts of things to try to get her to, to uh, marry me. And uh, <coughs> uh, I thought, you know, on her birthday, I saw probably a movie about this. So I took her out to dinner and took her to the uh, uh, to a nice place. And then we, I'm not sure if we went to the movies or what afterwards. But anyway, I brought her home. And I thought, just like the movies. So I'll, I'll pop the question to her. So I said on her birthday, honey, will you marry me? She said, no. Uh, I can't, I can't marry you right you now. Can't marry. <laughs> you know, that's not the way it happens in the movie. But I kept going, you know, and I kept asking her out. And we, now, here's the thing. She told me no, but me being sort of, uh, sort of intuitive, I thought in her heart she was really saying, keep coming, big boy. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I had that feeling. That was my, that was my take on it. Just, just, don't matter, don't pay any attention to me. You really... You know, so that's how these go. So, but finally this went on for, her birthday's in July, this went on clear until, you know, Thanksgiving. Now, there comes a time when you got to be a man, right, Paul? Right? Amen. There's a time when you're a man. So, I remember we did the whole thing. We, every, you know, every night had to go track her down on Tuesday and Thursday night, but, you know, that was still working. <laughs> Took her to church Sunday morning, went out to lunch Sunday after church, went to church Sunday night, uh, took her home, and finally, just the Sunday before Thanksgiving, I told her, Gaylene. In his macho way. Macho way. I said, Gaylene. Oh, no, it's actually the, the Sunday before that, the week before that. I told her, next Sunday, you have to decide whether to marry me or not. And that Sunday, that was it, the week before. That Sunday ended the Sunday before Thanksgiving. So we had the same week. Sunday night I came, well, did you think about it? And she said, I, I just can't write that. I can't. <laughs> so, so much for being macho. That's how macho works. So if you think macho gets you anywhere, no, it doesn't. It doesn't get you anywhere. So that's it. So I, that was it. Forget it. That's It's over. Finish. Sunday night. Goodbye. Adios. So Monday, no, 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 I have some principles. Monday, I didn't go over and look for her. No, I just moped. Tuesday, moped again. I wasn't going to give in. I made a statement. I was going to stick by it. Wednesday, moped again. Thursday, it was Thanksgiving. I went down to see my folks in Bakersfield and uh, then came back Friday and uh, Anyway, I kind of sorry we had. Oh, you're going to take it now. All right. So we were both junior high sponsors in our church. We worked with the kids, and in this particular church, he, um, you know, they say it's harder to get into a Baptist church than it is into heaven. Uh, because uh, you know, in order to serve and to work there, I mean, you, you had to be a member of the church. Well, he wasn't a member of the church. But, you know, they... You have to be baptized. Oh, yeah, you have to be baptized. Yeah. So, but, but they had given him a six-month dispensation that he could work in the church as youth, you know, we need good youth workers. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> so uh, with this, this uh, six-month dispensation, anyway, on this Friday night, we had a uh, junior high youth skate, and we had so many junior hires. Well, anyway, I went not knowing if he would be there. I, I was miserable that Thanksgiving. I went for Thanksgiving when Mom said, well, isn't, isn't Bob going to come on? I said, no, he's not there. And I was crying too because I was missing him, and yet I couldn't say yes. So that, that <laughs> night, he did come back for the youth, and, you know, we skated around, hand
hand in hand. Oh, that was fine. And, <laughs> we weren't going together. You no, 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 not no, anymore. No, no. It, was You're all, it was over. It was over. Yeah. <laughs> so again, we parted our ways after the youth night, and then that Sunday we saw each other. We didn't sit each other with each other at church, but we saw each other at church. We saw. I did not take her to church. I'm a man of principle. <laughs> That little thing at the skating party, we just call that, you know, Koinita time. You know, that was I wasn't going to take her to church because I had made that decision. Next uh, Sunday after Thanksgiving, now this is the Baptist church, and uh, as traditional in the Baptist church, the pastor gave a threefold invitation. I remember that. That was his term, threefold. You can come forward. You know, you had to walk all the way up to accept Christ, to rededicate your life, or to join uh, join the church. And you know, that's a long way in that hall, in that aisle. But I figured, hey, it's about time, Bob. I'd been a Christian for several years. I'll go ahead and do that. So I walked forward, and uh, one of the deacons took me to the back, to the prayer room, and prayed with me, asked me some questions, and this is what the deacon told Gaylene. Well, Gaylene, he knows he's saved. He knows he's in, but that's all he knows. <laughs> so there you go. That's about it. That's the sum total of my theology is that Jesus died for me and I can accept it. But other than that, I, don't ask me about anything else. I thought actually I knew more than that, but that's what he said. Anyway, I was late because of that, um, that uh, interview with this deacon. And so uh, by the time I got through talking to him, everybody had practically gone from the church. And I went out to the parking lot expecting to get in my car and, and go on. Lo and behold, who's waiting for me in her little car? My little Stingray Corvette convertible. 1963 Corvette convertible. Stingray. You wonder why I married her? No. I figured that's only I could get the car, but no. no. So... Anyway, she's waiting for me. So, you know, I said, well, you want to go to lunch together? And so, yeah. So, she got in my car. And uh, so, we started driving. And uh, we were going to go somewhere to eat. And she said, Bob, do you remember that question you asked me? As if I could forget. You know? I said, yeah. She said, well, I'll marry you. I'm driving the car. I, am told, I had to pull over and park because I literally was afraid to drive the car with my trembling hands. And I pulled her apart, and in the process, she explained why all of a sudden she's ready to get married. Well, for me, the spiritual component was so critical that I did not want to marry a man who married me just to marry me and then would drop out later and we couldn't serve together. But for me, it was critical for this to be an area of agreement, but not for me. I knew that if we were going to continue to serve together, it would have to be his decision, not my, my decision making it for him. So that, I, I love the man, I love the character, I loved who he was as a person, but this was very, very important to me is to know that this was his decision to serve the Lord all the days of his life and that he wasn't just doing it for me to marry me. So that was in, in uh, Thanksgiving in uh, March 18th. It was uh, the week before uh, Easter at that time, March 18th, Saturday night. Uh, that's when this grand occasion occurred. And uh, so what, what we've done is... Uh, uh, gone, I've gone through and uh, I've made a little video of, uh, of what happened. I don't show it yet, but let me finish introducing it here, but get ready there. And uh, this, this video, as you know, I'm, I'm kind of a video bug anyway, and I really got into this, and I, I thought to myself, you know what would be neat? Because we had high-tech 40 years ago was a tape recorder. If you had a tape recorder, you were high-tech. Yeah, reel-to-reel, -reel, tape, seven-inch, that was high-tech. And we had taped the entire ceremony. 
but we never listened to him in 40 years. And he said we tried once, but we couldn't get it to work, whatever. Anyway, but we still had it. So I, I got it, and I took it down to a studio, and I said, do you think there's any chance you could digitize this? The guy says, well, I've got some equipment, but it doesn't play at the same speed yours does. But I've got a friend who collects old tape recorders. I'll give him a call. Well, anyway, they did it. They were able to digitize a 40-year-old tape and with not too bad sound fidelity, considering the fact that it's 40 years old. He was afraid it might gum up his machine. But anyway, he did it. And so I was able to insert and uh, some of the actual words that were spoken 40 years ago. So what we're going to do, we're going to we're going to play the tape, play the uh, not the tape, but play the um, uh, the movie right now. And my bride will be given away by not her father, but her handsome son. She's going to give her away, and Pastor Dino and I are going to come up here and just play our part like the the groom and the pastor. And we're sort of going to act out a little bit, as you see, what goes on in our story. But watch the video. <laughs> Gailing Phyllis Hillman requests the honor of your presence at her marriage to Mr. Robert Dean Mitchell, uniting as one in Christ, asking the blessing of God upon this union on Saturday, the 18th of March at 7.30 o'clock in the evening, Willow Glen Baptist Church, Minnesota at Hicks, San Jose, California, reception immediately following. of the vows that you are about to make. As you keep these pledges and steadfastly set your purposes and affections upon your heavenly Father which is in heaven, your life will be filled with joy. And the Christian home that you're establishing here before us will be a place 
a blessing and a place of peace. Robert, will you have Gaylene to be your wedded wife, to live together in the holy state of marriage? Will you love her, cherish her, honor and keep her in every path through which God shall see fit to lead you? And forsaking all others, keep yourself only unto her as long as you both shall live? If so, say, I will. I will. <laughs> Amy, will you have Robert to be your wedded husband, to live together in the holy state of marriage? Will you love him, cherish him, honor him? and keep him in every path through which God shall see fit to lead you. And forsaking all others, keep yourself only and ever unto him as long as you both shall live. If so, say, I will. Will you repeat after me then? These vows should make them be before God, before this company of witnesses, and to each other. I, Robert, take you gaily. I, Robert, take you daily to my wedded wife, to my wedded wife, to have and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, till death us do part, till death us do part, according to God's holy order according to God's holy order. And thereto I give thee my promise. And thereto I give thee my promise. I gave thee Robert. I gave thee Robert. To my wedded husband. To my wedded husband. To have him to hold. To have him to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or poor. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death us do part, according to God's holy ordinance, and thereto I give thee my drop. What tokens do you give? Robert, will you place this ringer, ring upon Galen's finger? And as you do, will you repeat after me these words. As a pledge, as a pledge, and a token of the vows, and a token of the vows, between us made, between us made, with this ring I thee wear, with this ring I thee wear, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost. As you place this ring upon Robert's hand, will you repeat after me these words? As a pledge, and a, pledge, and a token of the vows, and a token of the vows between, us made, between us made, with this ring I thee wear. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. Will you again join your right hand? as we consider the ring. The circle, the emblem of eternity, and gold, the type of what is least tarnished and most enduring. It is to show how lasting and imperishable your faith now mutually pledged. As the union now formed is to be sundered only by death, it becomes you to consider the duties that you solemnly assume. If these be remembered and faithfully discharged, they will add to the happiness of this life. They will lighten by dividing your inevitable sorrows and heighten by doubling all of your blessedness. But if these obligations be neglected or violated, you cannot escape the keenest misery as well as the darkest guilt. Robert, it is the duty of the husband to provide for the support of his wife, to shelter her from danger, to cherish her for a manly and an unalterable affection. Again, it being the command of God's word that husbands love their wives. 
even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Gaylene, it is the duty of the wife to reverence and obey her husband. And quiet spirit, which is, in God's sight, an ornament of great price. His word commanding that wives be subject to their own husbands, even as the church is subject to Christ. Now it is the duty of both, each to delight in the society of the other. To remember that in interest and in affection you are to be henceforth one and undivided, and to see to it that what God hath joined together, no man put asunder. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love bondeth not itself, is not puffed up does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Love never fails. Let us pray. <laughs> Our gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, in this very sacred moment, we would ask that you might look down upon Robert Gailey, that you might place thy approval upon their marriage. We thank thee for their lives. We thank thee, Lord, that this is a Christian home that is being established here before us. As we know the lives of these two dear young people, we know that first and foremost, Jesus Christ is placed. We know, Lord, that it is their desire that he might be the head of their house, that he might be glorified in their home. We would pray, Lord, to that end. We pray, Lord, that their home might be a place always where joy reigns. Might everyone who enters in sense the love that they have for each other, the love that they have for the Lord. Might it be a place of laughter, might it be a place of good times, and might it be a place, Lord, that when the troubles come, there is such love in the turning to thee that this shall be faced with the vision of the Holy Spirit of God. So, Lord, we commit them to thee. And we pray thee for each of us as we witness this ceremony. Help us to see, O oh God, the beautiful relationship that is established between thee and thy own grants in the church. Help us, Lord, to look into our own hearts and our own lives. Lord, might we rejoice again. The provision that you have made in matrimony, and we all rejoice with Robert and Gailey at this happy time. For it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Father, we do pray. We do watch over marriage. As troubles come, that we can as a unit between us two turn to you and with your help overcome these problems and difficulties. And yes, Lord, as it is a new experience and a mysterious experience to us, you pray help us to fulfill our responsibilities and then for you to reap the benefits. We pray, God. Make our love for each other even stronger in years to come. And make us have a home that is, is hospitable for its people. And that as the people do come, that they will feel that we do have a Christian home. Help us, Lord, in the saints. Be with us, and most of all, those remember to turn to you in time of need, in time of joy. Lord, 
Father, I thank you so much for making us one. And Father, I pray that as we continue through life now together, that you'll continue to just bind us into one so much that we just might even grow to think and act more like each other, but most of all, Lord, like you. Father, it is our prayer that our home might be for thee. And Lord, the children that you bless us with might learn to love thee and to grow up and just want to serve thee with all their hearts. Father, we just thank you that you loved us. And that, Father, that you have given us this love for each other. And Lord, we just pray for your blessing and for your guidance as we continue. Now, in pursuance of your solemn vows made before our God and his company of witnesses, I pronounce your husband and wife. May the God before whom you have thus vowed grant you a blessing to be blessed and grant that when the snares and trials of this life are over, a glad and eternal reunion in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank mm -hmm. you.